For this first step, I'm going to be using a 1 inch by 2 inch by 6 foot long piece of wood that I got at Home Depot for about $4. And since the color of the wood is similar to the table, I'll slide a piece of white board underneath so it's easier to see. Next, I'll be putting a small dot in the middle and I'll keep doing this about every 1 or 2 feet until I get to the end. Now just take something that has a straight edge and connect the dots so that you have a line running down the center of the entire board. For this project I'm going to be using some WS2812B strip lights that have 30 LEDs per meter. And if you didn't want to use this exact kind you could easily substitute it with Govi, but just make sure whatever you use does not have that silicone coating on it like it does in this picture. Here I'm going to be taping the LED strip down so that it's running right alongside the line that we drew down the center. Next I'm going to be putting a mark on the center line right where each LED is located on the strip. For this step I'm going to be using a 3 eighths of an inch Forstner bit. What's nice about this tool is it has that little sharp spike at the end which is going to help us line up with the marks that I made down the center of the wood at each LED point. When you're drilling the hole, make sure to go down as straight as possible and go all the way through. Also make sure you have a scrap piece of wood underneath that you don't mind getting cut into. This step would preferably be done with one of these tools, but it worked out just fine doing it by hand. Next, I'm going to be using a half inch dado bit to cut a very shallow channel so that the LEDs have a place to rest in. This step is not really necessary, but it's going to help the wood lay flush against whatever surface you have it on. I did a pretty bad job of centering that cut on the router table, but I think it'll still work. So here I'm going to be laying the strip of LEDs in the channel, and the goal is that all the individual LED lights will fit into each circle that we cut out. I'm going to be using some electrical tape to secure the strip to the wood and keep everything in place. And for what I have in mind, I'm going to need two of these, with the second one being the exact same as the first. Now if you're going to use some Govi LED strip lights, you would be skipping this next section, but I wanted to at least go over how I'm connecting and powering these in case you end up doing it this way. I'm going to be using my favorite method of controlling these lights, which is WLED installed on an ESP8266 module. I've already soldered the voltage, ground, and data wire to the pins, and I'll be inserting the red voltage wire into the first positive terminal on my power unit, and the black ground wire into the first negative terminal. Next, I'll be taking the red wire that I've already soldered into the beginning of the LED strip and putting that into the second positive terminal on the supply unit, and then the black ground wire into the second negative terminal. Now you can just twist together the data wires, and the first one's done. To get the second one connected, it's a little bit different than what I've done in the past. Normally I would connect the second strip to the end of the first, but for what I'm wanting to do, I'm going to need each strip doing the exact same thing at the exact same time. So I'm going to be wiring them in what's called parallels, which will accomplish that effect. Also, make sure the arrows on both LED strips are going in this direction. Right now I'm just going to be splicing some wires together since the ones I've already attached to the beginning of the second LED strip are not long enough to reach the power unit. And at the recommendation of a lot of people, I've ordered some Wago connectors which I'm really excited to try out, but unfortunately they didn't arrive yet so I'll just be twisting them for now. Here I'll be inserting the red voltage wire from the second LED strip into the third positive terminal and then the black ground wire into the third negative position. And finally, so that the two parallel LED strips are doing the same thing at the same time, I'll be twisting all the data wires together. I'm going to quickly test them to make sure that A, they turn on, and that B, the animations are identical. And as far as I can tell, both sides appear to be in sync, which is what I wanted. Thank you. 
Sadly, one of the things I like to do on a regular basis is walk through Home Depot and Menards with a flashlight and look for things that I could potentially use in some LED projects. On one of my many trips, I ended up finding what I have here, which is some PEX tubing. It's mainly used by plumbers and is available in different colors, shapes, and sizes. Unfortunately, the stuff is pretty cheap and it comes in white, which does a good job of diffusing light. Now from what I saw, this stuff all has some print on the outside, and if you can't position it in a way that hides it, you can easily give it a little sanding and it comes right off. This is where your creativity can take off. There's an unlimited number of ways you can cut these down and insert them into the LED cutouts to achieve different looks and designs. You can also use a variety of ways to cut the tubing, but I ended up getting a tool for about $12 that makes it really easy. I'll go over a couple different designs I thought might look cool before getting into the one that I went with. So if you only wanted to use one board, you could start inserting the PEX tubing into the holes and if you put them in at all varying heights, I thought it would give off a nice wave-like effect when lit up. And for this method, I did end up cutting some shorter pieces of PEX pieces to use. You can also take longer pieces and bend them so that they form an arch, and since WLED lets you skip LEDs if you'd like, you could program it so that only the holes with the tubing in it would light up. Now this is getting closer to what I ended up going with, spacing the two boards apart and inserting the plastic into a hole on each side. And even though the pieces I'm using here are the same length, I thought it would look cool if you cut them at different sizes so that it would create what looks like small ripples in water. Now for what I actually did. I believe it was Menards that had 25 foot spools of the quarter inch PEX tubing for about $7 each and I bought two of these and I cut out a bunch of pieces that were all 12 inches long. I took down one of my previous corner projects to make room for this. I was able to hang them with only using three small L-shaped brackets on the outside of either piece of wood. I didn't use any drywall screws or anchors, so if I need to take this down, the repair to the wall would be minimal. Now you very well could go through the wood to secure it to the wall so that no hardware would be showing, but since the LED strip is in the middle, you'd have to get closer to the edge and I didn't want to possibly risk splitting the wood since I'd probably cry if that happened. So this is the fun part. You can begin to put the tubing into each hole, and I decided to stagger the two pieces of wood to create a little bit more of a downward slope, which I hope is going to look good. Here's a little bit closer of a look so you can see what's going on. 